Thank you so much for joining me today. So we want to talk about transformational focus. And the first question that will come to your mind is why focus? I once listened to a preacher and he told me there are four things that God wants from every man. Incidentally, those four things are also what your wife wants from you as a man. And so every time I remember those four things, it calls me to order. And if there's one crucial instruction the Holy Spirit has also passed across to me in my journey as a Christian, is actually this word focus. Thank you for listening to this Christian faith and revelation field video series. Our purpose is to teach the light, the life, and the love of God through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. We hope that this teaching will empower you for a life dedicated towards evangelism, leadership excellence, and transformation. I am Dr. Joshua Kolawoli, and I am encouraging you to listen to the end. Thank you. Let us start with a word of prayer. Holy Spirit, I bless you. The word we want to divide today, let it bless us, let it transform us. That's the goal. And let it cause us to lead a life that will give all the glory to God. In Jesus' name. So I want to hold you today. Let us try and talk together, understand the concept of focus from the physical world, and then we'll translate it into the spiritual realm. And then we'll be able to balance it uh, according to the instruction of Peter in 1 Peter 5, 8, where he speaks to us being watchful, um, being sober, being watchful. So I want us to understand the concept of focus as the center point of concentration of energy, attention on something. So when I talk to you about the point, the center point from we, where either energy concentrates together or emerges from. In physics, especially in geometrical optics, we define focus as, the, as that point on the principal axis where the light traveling parallel to the principal axis converges on or appears to diverge from, uh, depending on the kind of lens or mirror that you're using. So it speaks to the fact that focus is a point. It means you have to look at a certain point. The camera I'm using to record also has a focal, has a fo um, the lens has a, a focal length. And if you are to stand at the focus of that camera, you will get the exact best image that you can pick from that camera. So when you're trying to adjust the lens of your camera, you're trying to adjust it in such a way that the imagery you have is are aligned with the focus of the, the focal point of the, uh, of, the, of the lens of the camera. So if you want to understand this concept of focus very well, Bringing it into the spiritual realm, we need to first define what are the things that takes us away from our focus, right? But before I go into that, I would like you to understand the whole spectrum of the concept of focus. Because focus requires great choice. It's a choice for you to become focused. That is, you are narrowing down your options. So let's say I have a wide range of things, 10 things in this whole spectrum, in this, in, this whole, uh, in this circle that I want to talk to. If I decide to choose this, let's say three, I am trying to reduce my concentration of energy from this whole perimeter to this smaller circumference of the circle. I can choose out of these three to also narrow down my focus into something smaller. Meaning that there is a very high chance that when I decide to focus on the circle that has three, I probably will not see other numbers again, like four, like five, like six, seven, eight, one, two. I will not see that again. Now, when they say you direct your attention, you direct your energy, you direct your attraction, you direct your intention, your interest towards a single thing. Here, we're talking about directing our interest into the things that align with God. It's as simple as that. But before I go far, remember Matthew 6.33 speaks to the fact that we should prioritize the kingdom of God. That is, our primary focus should be on the righteousness of the kingdom of God. Now, you will get the point. When I say focus requires discipline and sacrifice, for me to focus on three means I am ready to look away from other things. 
For me to focus on three means I am ready to generate a lot of power and strength because it's not concentration of power. If you remember the concept of the magnifying lens where you put it on a dry leaf and when you're able to position the leaf at the focal length of that lens, you will see the, the leaf, the dry leaf catch fire, isn't it? What the magnifying lens has simply done is it has been able to concentrate both the light and the heat energy that is able to gather from sun rays to a single point on the leaf. And hence, the energy was too much for the leaf, then it has to catch fire. Of course, it was equal to the ignition energy required for the leaf, and then fire had to erupt. That is exactly the point we're making today. If I am urging you that if you want transformation, if you want, you see, we live in a world where changing is no longer enough. Why am I saying this? The world is filled with a lot of deception, it's filled with a lot of darkness. And because of this, the rapid effect of how this thing is being, uh, is being integrated into our social system, into our world system, is so much that if you start talking about change in this era, you are really, really way, way behind. The concept of transformation at this point speaks to fundamentally relearning rebuilding, rethinking the way we do things based on biblical principle. So if you're going to if you're going to transform who you are, that is move from a context to another context. Because I've once talked about the difference between change and transformation. Change is actually to move uh, from a level A to a level B. But within the same culture, within the same context, probably not changing a lot about your processes. But when we talk about transformation, transformation means you're actually changing the context. That's the first thing. And in the newer context, you are changing the capacity of the people. The level of maturity has changed. The processes have changed. The way things are being seen, are being understood in the new context is completely different. And that is why when people change uh, their geographical location, maybe from a world of orderliness to a world of, uh, sorry, from a world of disorderliness to a world of orderliness, one of the crucial things that shakes them is the culture they are bringing from the old place. The new place has to first crack them down, break away the culture of disorderliness that came with them. So when I'm talking about changing your context completely, it means in the newer context, there's a new way of thinking, new way of seeing things. So one of the things that impresses me so much about focus is that it is the po a point of interaction and exchange. I would want you to imagine a point where a man just makes up his mind and say, I am going to stay at this point until God intervenes into my matter. A crucial example is the case of Anna, who got it right and wept and cried diligently and stayed focused upon God. And God did answer that prayer. If you look at that case, it is the point of interaction and exchange. It's the point where humanity insists, like Jacob, that I will not let you go until God had to transform his name from Jacob to Israel. That is from a man to become a nation. That is exactly the concept of transformation, but it requires a great deal of focus. And that is why it has been impressed upon my spirit to come and discuss this concept of transformational focus. A kind of focus on the things of the kingdom that would actually show that you have prioritized the kingdom above everything else. Now, focus is also a point of new beginning and excellence. Focus uh, it, it requires a depth of understanding and a depth of wisdom for you to be able to achieve this focus. Why did I say it's a point of new beginning? If you take example for um, example like, like uh, Jacob, example like Abraham at the point where God changed his name. Example like Sarah, where God changed her name. Example like so many men of faith that God changed their name. There was a point in their life where they took a single decision that altered everything about them. Take example Daniel. At a point, they have to take a decision that we will not defile ourselves. That is a point of focus for them. It's a point where you can always make reference to that from this point onwards, we will not defile ourselves with the portion of the king's delicacy. And because of that, we would make up our mind to start going in a certain direction. And when you narrow down towards that direction, focus requires a lot of strength, a lot of discipline, and it's a great choice for you to make. But once you make it, it is a place of consistency. It's a place where you need to keep going, 
because when you think the result comes immediately, the result might not manifest immediately. The reason why people sabotage on the journey of transformation is because transformation, uh, like the understanding of the full concept of how things change, will take you to what we call the value of despair. In the value of despair, your character will be tested, your competence will be tested, your 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 compassionate nature will be tested your courageous nature will be tested it will be tested consistently when you show that you're worthy to give in your life for that transformation then god will open you up to a transformed system now uh, let, let's take this uh concept from proverbs 4 25. he says let your eyes look directly ahead toward the path of moral courage let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you towards the path of integrity Consider well and watch carefully. This is now a point where I need us to be careful. He said, if this is your own life and you have made up your mind to prioritize the things of the kingdom, uh, uh, let me change the color so that the things of the kingdom, let me put it as blue. Let's say you have made up your mind to prioritize the things of the kingdom within this blue sub-circle in this bigger circle. When you focus on the things of the kingdom, you need to keep your eyes looking around at other things. The reason is that we live in a world where things have priorities, where we have a lot of things competing for your attention. You have Netflix, you have Facebook, you have social media, several social media platforms competing for your attention. You have so many things that want to derail you from focusing on the things of the kingdom. They want to take the time you're supposed to come in to worship, the time you're supposed to come in to prayer. They want to take that time away. And another part of it that is so interesting is that your career would also compete. Because even your career, your job wants you to give 100%. And for you to be able to transform yourself in these different areas, you need 100% of your attention. So that means if you're going to be a great person, you will need to keep your head on the swivel, like they say in football, and that's American football. That is, you're remaining focused on the things of the kingdom. You know where your concentration of energy is, but you still keep your head looking right and left. That is what Peter was telling us in 1 Peter 5, eight, where he says you must be vigilant, you must be watchful. Because one thing you don't want to happen is that while you're fixing your gaze on the things of the kingdom, you don't want something to come from your blind side and actually hurt you. Now, you will now say, okay, so which one should we choose? You want me to be focused. You also want me to keep my head on, this, on the swivel. What I'm saying is when you maintain a single focus towards a straight line direction, you must keep reviewing all your angles goes all around. You must keep evaluating them because if you don't even evaluate them, you will not know when you have slightly deviated from focus. When you are away from the geographic north or the magnetic north as the case may be, depending on what kind of compass you're using. So when I talk about keeping your eyes on the focus, at, for, for, uh, for us that are in the journey of righteousness, our goal is to lead a life of integrity. That is a life of oneness with God, a life that shuns evil, a life that avoids the path of evil. So because of this, when we talk about the kind of focus that would transform us, is a kind of focus that remains on the word of God, that feeds consistently, that perseveres, is a kind of focus that requires a lot of strength, a lot of maturation, and that leads to transformation. You can see from Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, it says, set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above. When your mind is set on the things that are from above, these are the things that will be your priority. Number one, you will find that obedience will be your priority. When you start noticing that the concept of having faith in God is your priority, the concept of wisdom becomes your priority. Now, if you start looking at all these things, they are intangible values. By the time you see your priority shifting away from physical realm to intangible realm, they are more aligned with the things that improves your service unto God, then you're getting your focus right. So it means you're focusing habitually on the things that are the heavenly things, not on the things that are on earth, which have only temporal value. If you buy a brand new car today, it's only a matter of 10 years before you know that the value of that car is none. 
Today, the car might look, might glitter, might, might look appealing. In 10 years time, I would ask you that same question again. So, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it is only the things from above that carries eternal reward. The things on earth carries only temporal value. So, because of that, when you're keeping your focus, you're focused on heavenly advantages. But because you're still living on earth, you're keeping your head on the swivel to keep evaluating the things around you because you also need all those things to be in place to be able to allow you to prioritize. Why some people lose it in the long run is this. And I come from a country where you will see men who would spend all their days maybe going on the mountain to pray. And you see, after decades, they keep asking, does prayer work? Yes, prayer does. Prayer works. However, the fact that you're focused on the word, the prayer, the worship, does not mean you must not keep evaluating your career, evaluating your investment, evaluating your understanding of how money works, evaluating how your surrounding is. When you're evaluating all this, you're putting them in their proper perspective and prioritizing the things of God. You're seeking first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And these other things that you're evaluating will be added unto you as gain. So your goal is to remain focused on God and the things of God, to understand God and put your priority on the things of heaven, the things from above. So my advice to us as I'm trying to wrap up is that beware about instincts, your physical, sensual, self-centered instinct of the things, actually things driven by the longings of this earthly body. Because your goal should not be things that are immoral, impure, that are driven by your sinful passion, evil desire, or by your greed. Because very soon before you know it, this thing becomes idolatry. You start revering your house, your car, your, your whatever you procure, your gold, your investment, even above the God who owns you, owns the head, who owns the cattle upon the thousands of eels. So, another scripture to back up the concept of transformational focus. Because when I talk about it, people think I'm talking about focus with the physical eye. In this realm, I'm talking about focus with your mind. Your mind must be fixed on the things of the spirit. Your mind must be fixed on the things of the spirit, its will and its purposes. So the goal for us is that anything that would make you be on the wrong side of history with God, then you put it in perspective and avoid it. Now, there are some general other good things that would keep you in good shape, but they are not in perfect will with God. You also need to keep those things in perspective. But far more importantly, what are the things you should prioritize? You should prioritize the word of God. It's not only about the reading and the studying. It's about listening. It's about even you serving as the preacher of the word. Because before you get to the realm of talking about it, evangelizing about the word of God, then you must have caught some revelation from the word. So the word becomes flesh to you. You have gone through it experientially. So you're not talking about superficial learning. You're talking about a profound form of learning where the word of God had gone through you. It had become your identity. It, it's now personal to you. You have resonated with it at a social and a kingdom level. So the transformation is not only at personal realm. It's at social realm and at kingdom transformation realm. That is, even when you belong to the church, a ministry, People in the ministry can point out to you that you are different from us because there is some degree of transformation that happened upon you. More importantly, focus on serving, giving, leading, building, and doing. You see, there are some wisdom that comes from the practical experience that we go through. And this builds our capacity. It builds our identity. It helps us to transform ourselves. And why do we need all this? Because we also need kingdom transformation ultimately. For kingdom transformation to happen, we will need to integrate the word of God, our transformation from the word of God, from the concept of serving, giving, and building ourselves, and worship, and intercession, and evangelism. We need to integrate these three together to be able to drive excellence for the kingdom of God, drive transformation for the kingdom. So as I wrap up, in summary, Focus is necessary. 
Understanding how to do it is important, but you will need the power of the Holy Spirit to remain focused on the things that are of paramount importance per time. And that is why you must stay connected. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you.